Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to speak about a rather important topic. So I have made reference to this in previous videos, but I've never made a video dedicated to this topic. So this topic is around cardiac arrhythmias in individuals using steroids. So cardiac arrhythmias are essentially irregularities with your heartbeat. And I don't think this topic gets enough attention because I haven't found too many videos on this topic, and I think it does deserve its own video. So this topic was brought to mind after I was shared a article from a friend, and I read through it, and I found something interesting. So essentially, this was an autopsy done on bodybuilders that had died prematurely, so essentially before the age of 50, and they looked at the causes of death in these individuals. Now myocardial infarction was one of the biggest contributors to their premature death. However, another important cause of death were cardiac dysrhythmias as well as sudden death caused by these cardiac anomalies. And it's important to note that myocardial infarction or heart attacks can happen in the context of these cardiac arrhythmias. So it's important to note that it doesn't get enough attention because left ventricular hypertrophy gets all the attention when it comes to steroids and side effects on the heart. However, cardiac arrhythmias are another important topic. And it is well known or established that steroids do cause autonomic dysfunction or dysregulation of the heart. So essentially what this means is your heart is quite complicated, but essentially there's a nervous system that upregulates the heartbeat and stimulates that flight or fight response. And then you have the vagal nerve stimulation, which brings your heart rate down to a relaxed state or the parasympathetic response. And it's important that you are not in a sympathetic response for a greater period of time than needs be. Obviously, when you're in the gym, you will have that sympathetic response. However, it's important that once you're out of the gym, you recover to that parasympathetic response or vagal nerve stimulation occurs and your heart rate goes back to normal. Because the problem with autonomic dysregulation is that if there is excessive sympathetic overdrive, your heart rate will stay elevated and this predisposes you to arrhythmias. Some of the milder things may be extra systolic beats, so essentially your heart is beating normally and then there's an extra beat. And other things such as ventricular arrhythmias or tachycardias. So essentially what happens is your heart essentially goes into overdrive just randomly and your ventricles just pump at a rate that far exceeds that of perfusion from the coronary arteries of the heart and this can predispose you to something like a heart attack because your heart isn't getting enough time or enough diastolic time to fill those coronary arteries and perfuse the heart muscle. So this is an oversimplification of this topic but I think it's important that for the general public we're aware of what is happening. Now this may seem like it's not a very common phenomenon and it probably isn't in those utilizing low doses of steroids. However, with certain compounds, I get a lot of complaints from individuals that they feel their heart beating in their chest when after exercise especially, or that suddenly they feel an extra beat or their heart just feels off for a second. And this is usually due to overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. Furthermore, when you feel palpitations, sometimes these can be normal, or sometimes you are feeling that extra systolic beat, or an ectopic beat. But is there any research to confirm that this does happen, that there is this cardiac autonomic dysregulation? Well, in fact, there is. And you can criticize me for utilizing this particular study since the sample size is small. However, I think it's quite important since the results are rather convincing and just from anecdotal sources of clients and other people I've spoken to, this phenomenon does occur quite regularly. So I'll share the article up above. And essentially this is cardiac autonomic dysfunction in anabolic steroid users. So they picked around eight anabolic steroid users and they put them on a super physiological dose. And in this case, it was around 500 milligrams of steroids a week. And let's see what they found. So overall, what they found is that there was cardiac 
autonomic dysfunction in those utilizing steroids when compared to placebo. So essentially individuals who were not on steroids. And what they use to prove this is they put these individuals into a state of exercise and they used high and low intensity. And what they found was quite interesting. They found that there was a reduced vagal modulation of the heart rate. So essentially there was a reduced relaxation of that fight or flight response after exercise. And they proved this via ECG measurements during exercise, during the stress test, to show that there was a decrease in parasympathetic response and in fact a parasympathetic dysfunction after exercise. The heart was not returning to normal as quickly as those who were not using steroids. And what is important to note is your ability to recover to a parasympathetic state after exercise is actually linked to your risk of sudden cardiac death. So for those medical professionals or anyone just interested in cardiology, essentially they found that there was decreased variability in RR intervals after exercise. After exercise, there seems to be a variability in RR intervals as you increase your vagal response and your heart rate becomes slower and slower and slower. And they found that the individuals using steroids had this sympathovagal imbalance. So essentially there wasn't a balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic response, which I mentioned before. And this put them at higher risk of malignant or bad ventricular arrhythmias, which I mentioned at the beginning where the ventricles just pump way too fast. And this itself can lead to pulselessness or sudden cardiac death or a heart attack. But what is the cause of this? Why do steroids do this? Well, unfortunately, there is no information at this point in time to tell us why this happens. They suggest that it could be due to the negative heart remodeling caused by steroids. And this heart remodeling causes electrical remodeling, which eventually causes this autonomic dysregulation. But if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that certain compounds, especially anadrol, and NPP cause an overdrive in sympathetic response. And this is typically driven by overstimulation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So what can we do to solve this issue? Well, obviously stopping the offending agent is gold standard. So essentially stopping the androgen. Obviously a lot of steroid users depend on steroids for their career or whatever it may be. And this might not be possible. So this brings in the importance of, first of all, reducing that sympathetic response. So avoiding those compounds that overstimulate you. And this is commonly with MPP, as I mentioned, TREN or Anadrol. Also, it's important for you to be aware of if you are predisposed to this. And that would be through observation after exercise and seeing how quickly you return to that parasympathetic response where you're calm, your heart rate returns back to its resting heart rate. And if you think it is prolonged, there is no time given to reaching that parasympathetic state. However, in most suggestions, it's one to two hours. If it seems prolonged, then you should probably consider pharmacological intervention and as well as meditation post-exercise or just breathing exercises since deep breathing can stimulate your vagal system and this can help return your heart rate back to normal as we have established that there is decreased vagal stimulation. But again, I want to make note of the importance for angiotensin receptor blockers as well as ACE inhibitors for decreasing that sympathetic response, as well as the importance for beta blockers. Now, I'm not suggesting you use them. However, we know from multiple various different studies done on beta blockers that they help induce vagal stimulation since they are acting on the beta receptor and they can decrease your risk of ventricular arrhythmias if you are predisposed to them. So for the choice of beta blocker, a common one would be nabivalol due to its lack of interference with your exercise, but any cardio selected beta blocker should be useful such as carvitidol, bisoprolol, metoprolol, there are quite a few. So I just wanted to make this video to make individuals aware that there is another problem that plagues steroid use, and that is this cardiac autonomic dysregulation. 
And it's important to be aware of it so that if you do come up with these symptoms of lightheadedness during exercise or shortness of breath or just feeling your heart beat excessively with a decreased time to resting heart rate, that you may have to implement a certain protocol to ensure this does not progress into anything more malignant. So I'll just go over that. There's pharmacological intervention and non-pharmacological. Non-pharmacological would be cardiovascular exercise as well as meditation post-exercise. And pharmacological would involve the use of ACE inhibitors or ARBs and beta blockers. And I think those should be the mainstay when it comes to prevention of this potentially dangerous side effect from steroids. Obviously the cause isn't known at this point in time, but as soon as it is, I will let you know and I'll make a video. But I hope this helps some individuals out there who especially experience these side effects when using steroids and that this is a bit of an eye-opener and helps individuals with prevention of this potentially dangerous or lethal side effect from steroids. So let me know what you think about this video down below in the comments and share this video to those that you think could benefit from it and I will see you in the next